So good evening, everybody, and welcome to the NJFCC uh, presidents and delegates meeting. Hope everybody had a good summer and got a lot of photography in. And uh, thanks for uh, joining the meeting. The first thing uh, that I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, go around and uh, uh, find out which clubs are uh, on the meeting. Um, so let's see, uh, uh, Daniel. Yes. What club are you from? I'm uh, representing the uh, Raritan Photographic Society. Great. Um, okay. <laughs> and here, and now I'm up to a last name that I don't even want to try to pronounce. Uh, Jadis? Jadis. Yes, I'm a member of the Vernon Camera Club as the vice president at this time. Great. Uh, Kathy? Hi, I'm from uh, the Tina Camera Club. Um, I'm the vice president, and Rachel couldn't be here tonight. Rachel Kadick, the president. So I'm here instead. Great. <clears throat> Charlotte? Camera Naturalist, Camera Club. Okay. Uh, Mary? Um, well, Unless uh, Carla logs in soon, I'll represent Livingston. Okay. I just forwarded her the link again. Uh, Vicki? Well, tonight I'm representing <laughs> River Point Camera Cl Photography Club. Great. Because there are two people here from Cranberry, so I don't need to represent them. <laughs> just a couple of hats that just you have. Always. Uh, John? Uh, Monmouth. Monmouth. Okay. Uh, Alan? Uh, Manalapan Four Seasons. Great. Uh, Debbie? Hi, I'm the uh, president of the Cranberry Digital Camera Club. Great. Uh, Sudor? Uh, Sudor, you need to uh, unmute yourself. Uh, sorry. Uh, Somerset County Photography Club, I'm the president. Okay. Um, Terry? Terry, you need to unmute yourself. Terry's got to be Granberry. Terry, hello. <laughs> Terry's, uh, the, ter Terry's our NJFCC delegate to okay. uh, from Cranberry, um, you guys. Who's that from uh, Stonebridge? Florence Eamon, uh, president of Stonebridge Photo Club. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Lisa would be Vernon. Okay. Um, Phil Z. Hub. Hub of course. <clears throat> and Carla. Uh, she needs to unmute, Carla. Um, I just logged in. I'm assuming you're asking which club. Yes. Livingston. Great. Welcome, everybody. You missed, uh, and I'm representing Sparta. Um, for, I was, okay, Virginia. Right. I'm, I'm representing Sparta in addition to being treasurer. And at the same time, uh, as being treasurer, uh, the first thing on our agenda is your treasurer's report. Okay, cool. That's good. Then I can finish my pizza. Okay. Um, <laughs> basically, the total in um, you may the total in all accounts as of August thirty first was sixteen thousand four hundred and seventy dollars and fifty cents. 
our budgeted income for 2021 was $1,850, and our budgeted expense is $4,045, which means that if everything goes as budgeted, we'll have a shortfall of $2,195 this year. Normally that shortfall is made up by Photorama, but because we didn't have Photorama this year, we are going to be short on our expenses because our income is never as high as our expenses. And so that's why, I just wanted to say that because that's why Photorama is so important to the NJFCC and while it, why it is so important that you uh, push it with your clubs and make sure as many people come as possible because it's a very important way for us to balance our budget. Our uh, income to date is $664, but that's because most of our income comes in at the end of the year with the membership renewals. And our expenses to date are $1,654. And so we're pretty much on track to be consistent with our budget. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. okay. And thank you for the plug for Photorama. <laughs> Um, we are ahead of ourselves uh, this year uh, with the scheduling for Photorama, only because we unfortunately had to cancel last year. Um, Photorama is scheduled for Saturday, April 9th. It'll be from 8 to 4. And we're, um, I already have it confirmed at Middlesex County College. Um, Roman, would you like to talk a little bit about the program that we're doing? Yeah, um, a lot of it is in progress because we haven't been able to meet in person. I'm going to start my video again so people can see me. You know, uh, Judy is a good friend of mine. She does ballet, dance. And if you look at her work, we're actually looking at doing in-person model shoots, which we did a while ago, you know, at Photorama. Uh, but this will be different models. I know Nick and Al are uh, part of this where we're going to have the models and do hands-on shoots. If you can't make it, we're going to do first part of the trip virtual and in-person. Uh, if if New Jersey allows that, right? You know, we're, we're still following CDC guidelines and New Jersey guidelines. So if they say, yeah, we can meet in person, we're gonna do it, hopefully. Um, it's in April, uh, promote it. And the model shoots are going to be, the, the college is a great venue uh, that we will be able to do. I'm gonna fly from Florida to be there. Uh, so, you know, uh, we need to promote it because the Federation, you know, this is our big fundraiser so that we can do the competitions and everything else and the programs that we've been doing. So, you know, like I said, um, we hope to be in person. That's our plan right now. Uh, things change. So, Right now, if we can do it, it's going to be model shoots hands on, which is a big difference from what Photorama used to be with just the lectures. Now we're going to do hands on. Not hands on the models. Oh, yeah. Well, OK. <laughs> no, I'll be there to make sure nobody puts hands on the models. OK, so but hands on <laughs> photography. OK. Will this be um, similar to like the model that I would say Amherst or? Will oh, well, have? okay. So I'm going to go with no, because okay. for me, with the models at Amherst, they were a little too young. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I, don't mean, I don't mean the models so, themselves and so much as like the setup. Will it be like with that? Uh, yes. And, uh, well, you know, we're going to have, we're going to look at indoor shoots, outdoor shoots, because the facility allows for both. Okay. And we're going to probably have, I'm going to use the term characters because, uh -huh. okay. you know, Kathy, I'm not a model photographer, but yeah. we, we, Judy is big into ballet dancers. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so we're going to have a ballet, frilly, fluffy, I might even take a picture, you know, uh, yeah. and I've done it with her. 
So that's the difference. And we're looking to have professional, well-rounded models, uh, Nick, Al, and, you know, everybody's going to go into what we have. But Judy likes the ballet people. And if you look at her work, she also teaches textures and Photoshop backgrounds and other things. So the educational portrait uh, portion will be that. Um, and but it will be hands on model shoot. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> because yeah, no hands on. Yeah. No. Uh, but hands on photography. How about we call it that? Hands on photography. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be great. Thanks, Roman. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the NJFCC citation. Al, do you have a report on the citation? Yes. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, one nomination this year. Um, and uh, that application uh, was reviewed um, as per the um, nominating uh, rules and procedures. Uh, we could not come to a consensus um, on that candidate. Um, so uh, we do not have a uh, nominee uh, for the citation in 2021. Uh, if uh, anyone in the audience uh, believes there is someone who has contributed um, to the art of photography um, in the state of New Jersey, uh, and particularly um, with the NJFCC or its member clubs, uh, I would respectfully uh, re have you uh, go to the Federation website. Um, there is a set of criteria and rules uh, that are in place. Um, and if you believe your candidate um, is, uh, is uh, eligible and worthy of the uh, citation, by all means, uh, feel free to nominate them uh, for the year 2022. Um, Nick, can I step in for a second? Yeah, can I step in for a second? Uh, Mr. Brown is incorrect because there was a nomination and... Um, Said that this person was unanimously voted to receive the citation and he didn't have a vote in it. So Mr. Brown, we'd like to present the NJFCC citation for 2021 to you. Congratulations, <laughs> well deserved. And psych, because you had no idea. <laughs> and I was your sponsor. There you go. Wow. Uh, I kept my wow. mouth shut for once, Nick, right? Me too. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm, I'm floored. I, I had no idea. There this, you go. This, Congratulations. This is, we, this we, is, we took the executive decision to keep you out of the loop. <laughs> this is, this is uh, uh, mm -hmm. certainly more momentous than being put in the back of a minivan and driven out <laughs> to Nickerson Beach. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what wow. was wrong with that? <laughs> you know? Wow. Um, well, it's well-deserved, um, Al. Well-deserved. Um, 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 listen, I'm, I'm completely blown out of the water. I, I really am. Um, you talk about someone who is, uh, is not feeling um, uh, deserving of this. This is, this is really a very, very uh, high honor to me, very humbling. Um, so many uh, great people. Uh, who've contributed uh, to this organization and, and to photography um, uh, before me. Um, I'm just like almost at a loss for words. This is really, really great. Thank you everyone so much. I, I really don't know what to say for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Al, so, you deserve it. Thank you. Well deserved, Al. Thank well you. Deserved. Well, well deserved. President of the Club for... Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congrats. Thank you. And we'll be doing the presentation of the actual award at Photorama. And also, if there's anyone who is nominated for uh, 2022. Wow. So Outstanding. You have to be there. Thank, thank now you, you got to buy the ticket, Al. You know, you got to go. <laughs>
I'll, I'll do that. I was I'll worried about how to get you there this year. <laughs> I was already planning how the heck to get you there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is our competitions. Uh, the dates for both the uh, Nature and Pictorial are up on the NJFCC website. Um, one of the things that we ran into last year as a little bit of a problem was that a lot of the clubs are asking their members to put in the images ahead of the date that the club must turn over the images to NJFCC. And we'd just like to remind everybody, please let your club members know that your club date is in most cases a few days to a week prior to when uh, the images have to be turned over to NJFCC. And uh, hopefully if you remind uh, your club members who participate in the competitions, this will run a little bit smoother this year. Ellen, can I say something? Sure. I think what needs to be said is that whoever is setting up your PCP competitions on your club's website or for your club needs to select a date that's earlier than the date listed on the NJFCC website. That would you know, result in the same things. Those members then would have their um, images in your club's competition. And then the delegate or whomever is assigned has to live by the date on the NJFCC website. What apparently got confused several times this year was that people, instead of looking at their club's websites and the club's cutoff dates, we're just looking, glancing at the NJFCC dates and confusing that as their club dates. So the, just to reiterate, the date on the NJFCC website is for the delegates cut off. Their uh, entries have to be put on the uh, NJFCC site by that date. So you need to set an earlier date for your clubs. Thank you, Mary. Um, the other issue that we have, if you're a club that is uh, hosting uh, one of the competitions, please be in touch with uh, your competition chairs. Um, what we found last year was that uh, several of the judges um, ended up judging in a number of the contests. And we'd like to get uh, some of the new judges an opportunity uh, to judge. And uh, some of our uh, old judges who haven't been judging that much an opportunity to judge. So we're asking you to check with the competition chairs um, while you're making your arrangements for your judges just to make sure that uh, the people you're selecting haven't done uh, three or four uh, competitions. Uh, Mary, did you want to add anything to that? No, that's pretty clear. Um, but, well, the issue for this year is that once people agree to host a competition, they typically get uh, immediately to work on setting, uh, uh, selecting their judges. So we may have some overlap this year. So just hopefully the following year, if you choose to host a competition, um, we'd like to recommend that you maybe check with the other clubs and um, what myself and Bob can let you know who we're talking to, what clubs we're talking to, so that you know who to contact if you want to talk to someone about who they're using as a judge. Typically, most uh, camera clubs are using one of their own salon or, or top level uh, um, photographers as one of the judges because that is allowed. And then two judges who are on the NJFCC list on the website. 
So, um, you know, then you can contact anybody there. I think uh, people just go with, the, or have been going with the names they're familiar with from year after year. And because it's easier, because those people tend to accept. So uh, we just would like to get a little rotation, I guess, and a little variety in the judging. So, um, you know, I, we probably won't see all of that this year, but, um, you know, some of it and uh, the following year, that's what we're hoping for. And uh, Bob and I can remind you if you accept uh, a hosting. And Ellen, I just want to confirm all of the competitions will be done virtually so that you can record them. Is that correct? Yes, they will. Okay, thanks. Um, now, we're looking right now at doing the print competition in conjunction with Photorama. Uh, since right now, uh, things are a little too uncertain uh, with the continuation of the virus, that seems like uh, the best solution to look at that spring day uh, to also do the comp uh, print competition along with uh, Photorama. Next thing on the agenda is uh, judges training. Uh, Nick, do you want to talk about that? Nick? Hold on, I'm coming. Um, so the, the question that I have about the judges training, um, we gladly would do it, could do another one. The problem is I still think that there's not a lot of judges um, getting, a lot of new judges getting a lot of assignments. And I'm not sure if we wanna bring a whole new crop of new judges in because that just dilutes it for the other judges that are not getting um, the assignment. Um, I do think we should do something, um, maybe some sort of a mentorship or maybe some sort of a um, sort of a mock judging thing that we could do with our current newer judges in order to get them some exposure and, you know, get them out there, um, get them out there and actually doing judges and, and you know, getting some trials, um, you know. Ellen, and feel free to jump in. I, you know, I don't know if we want to just have a discussion about this or what people think about it. Um, I'm fine either way. If we want to host a new judging program, we can do that. That's easy enough. But I, I personally think we should hold off a little bit and get these judges that have been trained in the last two or three years out there judging and make sure that they're comfortable judging and clubs are comfortable using them as judges. I think that's a great idea. Because uh, what I've been seeing is a lot of the uh, clubs are using the judges that they've been comfortable with for years and not uh, uh, venturing into the pool of new judges. Can I, I have a comment. Uh, have you contacted all the judges on the list to see if they have that same feeling? Because there may be a number of people on the list that you don't see because maybe they're not interested in accepting. And maybe we ought to poll the people on the list. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if maybe we should have an actual meeting of judges mm -hmm. and you know, kind of talk it out and see who's okay. actually judging. Okay. I've spoken to a few people that said I judged once and I'm not doing it again, end of story. And I remember someone who was with me who said he just wasn't comfortable judging and didn't plan on doing it. So I think we really need to ask the people if what your impression is, is in fact uh, true. And one more thing, uh, the lady from Stonebridge, uh, did you want to say something? I actually wanted to ask the question. Stonebridge is dying to have new judges. We need a new list. I think we've asked several times, I don't know who, but if we could get a new list with their phone numbers, et cetera, you know, and maybe some comments about the judge, that would be wonderful because we would love to have new ones. The list exists on the NJFCC website. Your delegate and president okay. should have access. If you don't, then I would- Mary. Yes, go ahead. Mary, I'll jump in on that one. I'll be glad to- uh, uh, send you a copy of the list of judges. Um, really if you could it. just in the chat, 
put down the best email for me to send it to. Sure, I'll stick it in the chat. Thank you so much. No okay. problem. Can I throw in my two cents here with something, Ellen? Of course. Real quick. Um, now, now that you got all these letters after your name, you got to start talking again. Enough already. <laughs> <laughs> enough already. Um, you know, I noticed um, that there is a little bit of a backlog with people um, not being able um, to have an opportunity to get their feet wet, so to speak. Right. Um, and I know from time to time, um, clubs uh, will have um, what we call in Cranford Milburn, which is my home club, back to club night, where people just submit images for the fun of it. And there's a little narrative that goes along with it from each photographer. Um, maybe perhaps down the line, if there are any clubs um, that are interested um, in doing a um, a sample contest uh, before their season starts or at the beginning of their season, um, they could invite one of these judges, especially now that Zoom is still um, popular with a lot of people. And I don't think everyone is going to be back in person um, this camera club season. Um, perhaps we can invite or a club can invite uh, one of the new judges to come judge one of these competitions even though in terms of the club, it, it doesn't have much bearing on the club's uh, official uh, tally or, or record of the year. Um, it would be an opportunity for, for a judge to get his or her feet wet, an opportunity for clubs to get to know some of these newer judges uh, without it having too much effect or disruption uh, on the club's uh, normal uh, competition calendar. Um, and again, you know, I think the, the real advantage of this really is, is just the advent and the use of Zoom because it's, it's so widely used now. Um, there's really no travel expense involved for the judge. Um, and if they wanted to, um, you know, waive their fee um, just to gain some experience real time, um, I think that could be a viable way to, to get some of the judges, maybe not all of them, but at least a few of them um, some, some experience um, judging um, and get the clubs an opportunity to get to know them too. So I'm going to chime in here. Uh, I think, you know, we started this and Ellen has embraced it. Uh, so I want to know because I see a lot of familiar names, presidents, everybody else delegates from the clubs. What do you guys uh, feel about a Zoom meeting of what Nick was kind of insinuating and now meet the judges? You know, we, we can do that Zoom meeting. We have the technology now. And I, I, you know, I know a lot of you know many of the judges who've been around the block for lack of a better word for a long time, but meet the new judges. What do you think about a Zoom meeting for that? Because there is, we, we've thrown the mold out, you know, a long time ago. So I want to hear from you, Terry, and everybody else who's new on. Uh, what do you think about having a meet the judges meeting? I think that's a good idea. And another thing that we, uh, I know in my club goes over the judges list at um, the beginning of the summer, and we see some of these names and we don't, we do like to try new judges and every year we, we do get, you know, a few new judges. And, but we're not sure, is this a new person? Is this somebody, there's also people on there that, that really don't judge anymore. And um, so I think it's a good idea to check with all those people on the list. Um, is this somebody that we've called, tried to get in touch with and we couldn't get in touch with them? I think it would be a good idea if you made a note, this, you know, new judge, new judge, if you just put some kind of a mark next to their name. So, so, so just thinking out loud, um, would people join in? What if we had a um, sort of a judges kind of refresher course, but what we do is we invite all the people who want to actively judge. We invite presidents, delegates of the club to, to watch in. And what we do is we kind of do some, some, sample judging 
like maybe to have them critique on 10 images. And then you get to see them actually judge to kind of get an idea and say, oh, you know, you know, there's, there's a new person judging that person seemed pretty good. Why don't we kind of have them at our club, him or her? I like that idea, Nick. I think that's good. Yeah, I, know and, I, I know our judge chair would like that. And given that we record it, then it's available oh. online right. for you guys to look at whenever, even if you can't make the meeting. Yeah. And so, that's so I, the beauty of this, the, what we're doing now, that we're recording it, and then you can actually see the new judges. In particular, we, you know, uh, as an old judge, yeah, okay, you know me. The okay. new ones, we want to give the newer judges where the presidents and delegates can come in. If you can't make it, we're going to record it. And I think this is a win-win, which is always what we've talked about for the clubs. Yeah. You know, in my case, in my case, I went around many times with Ben before I was a judge and I sat there and watched him judge. And, you know, then we talked about it. Then all of a sudden he couldn't make it. He's like, Hey, you know, can you fill in and this time? And that's kind of how I got into the, to the judging, but you know, he was sort of a mentor to me. Um, you know, we, we can probably hook some people up with mentors to, you, you know, to kind of talk about the challenges and the questions they might have after judging, things like that. You know, we could probably do something like that. So maybe we could get a list of all the, all the new judges and we could, we could set up a date and rather than doing a new judges program that we could do that. Right. Okay, that sounds could like I, could, I, could, I, could I add something? Um, could I? Um, yeah. I'm being way up in Sparta, it's hard for us to get people who to come up uh, and judge for us. I mean, we're just a long ways from most of the rest of the world. And I would like to, I've got some people in the club who are interested in becoming judges. And I would like to have some training for, because just because we need a bigger pool up in Sparta to draw from. Now we're doing a lot of our competitions virtually, but we still do have in-person competitions. Um, and it's hard to find people who will come all the way up there. So I would really like to, to, to still have the training so that we can get some more people trained from my part of the country. So just my two cents. Well, I think both are viable options. We need to continue training. You know, but bottom line is now you can get a judge from anywhere in the world. Me from Florida, you can get me. You know, well, no, don't count on that, by the way. You know, yeah, um, yeah, in that same word, yeah, I've got, I'm judging in Florida, I'm judging in Illinois, I'm judging in Massachusetts. So I got a, I think Virginia or West Virginia or something. So we do have a bigger pool of judges. I would like to, uh, I guess, support that proposal that uh, Nick uh, discussed. Uh, someone, well, president of a club and past president of the Monmouth Club and a judge, but I've been judging for four years. Uh, I still consider, and I think that would be very helpful to all the relatively new judges, as well as to, as you said, let people know uh, there are other judges other than the, uh, the folks who've been doing for 10, 15 years. Oh, thank you for the compliment of only 10 to 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I agree with you. We, uh, I think that's going okay. to be a great, great, you know, Zoom meeting. Again, you don't have to travel. Yeah. Okay, so um, we will uh, put this together. Um, I've got down uh, everybody's suggestions, um, and uh, Nick, besides you as uh, chairman of uh, the judges training, who else is uh, part of your committee? I, I put my hand down immediately, by the way, you know. You, know, well, you, you can always call me. Well, typically, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of... We'll go after Roman, Dave Desrochers, um, Phil. Um, Phil. I'll twist his arm. Um, yeah, he's 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 pretty easy to twist his arm, but then you you know sometimes things come up last minute. So, um, okay. But again, we have to decide what format we're going to do if we're going to actually do a full new judges training program. 
Um, I think it could be a combination of it both. Could, it could be a combination of both. You know, I, I mean, it's going to be a few hours, but um, we could probably do a combination of both and then have, like I said, invite delegates, your, your, whoever, um, select your judges, delegate, presidents, and, and say, okay, yeah. you sit in and, you know, watch Roman judge. And if you like them, call them up. And if you don't, don't call them. <laughs> I'm the tough judge, so I've been told. Oh, yeah. please. <laughs> I like to think you are. You're like the easiest judge there. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Thank you to everybody for your input on this. And uh, we will uh, put this together and uh, uh, schedule something on Zoom uh, so that everyone can uh, see the new judges and uh, learn who they are. And I think we'll also uh, take that list and uh, do an email to everybody to uh, find out who wants to judge and who doesn't want to judge. Great. Um, the next thing uh, on the agenda, the NJFCC programs. Um, we're going to continue uh, what we started last year to try to put together uh, several free programs for uh, uh, anyone of uh, any member club, any member of a member club. That sounds so complicated. Can I, um, can I ask a question? If it's if it's on meetup. Sure. How, how is it just limited to members of member clubs? Well, I think it we, isn't. It isn't. We, I think right. we started meetup with the intent, uh, and this was a lot of people that were at the president's meeting to get people to. So, meetup is, you know, the own animal. We all know what it is. But we're trying to get people from Meetup to join NJFCC clubs. Mm -hmm. That's our purpose in the Meetup. Uh, so if we charge, and we may well charge, uh, that's a discussion. But bottom line is, it's free to the NJFCC member and member clubs. We're, we're for now we're keeping it that way, and the Meetup group. Yes, we're allowing people to come in from all over because the new world is that a person from Florida, me, a person from Kansas City can join an NJFCC club and be part of, like I said, this is a new way of gaining membership for the clubs. This is what the NJFCC started and we hope to continue. Uh, because again, we don't know if the guy from Georgia is going to join Sparta, going to join whatever club. Uh, how are we going to get new membership? That's always been our concern. And I think that by having the meetup group, potentially the clubs of the NJFCC could get new members. That was the whole concept of this. Thank you, Roman. And you just uh, covered the next thing on the agenda for me. <laughs> I might have read the agenda, by the way. <laughs> um, the only thing that I want to add on the meetups is the fact that uh, when we do have an event, um, you want to remind uh, all your members that RSVPing in meetup is not Re is the same as registering in Eventbrite. And in almost every case, they're gonna have to not only RSVP in Meetup, but they're also gonna have to register in Eventbrite. And there's a reason for that. When we get uh, people registering in Eventbrite, we're able to ask them the question, if they're a member of one of our member clubs and they check that off. 
And when they say no, that they're not a member of the club, then that gives us an opportunity to send them an email saying, are you interested in joining a club in New Jersey? Here's the list of clubs. So that's the reason for the double uh, RSVPing and, regist and registration. So there's a whole method to this madness. We're not just doing it uh, for the heck of it. Um, and we have had uh, a few results uh, where people have said uh, they're going to check out X, Y, and Z club. And hopefully you've gotten uh, new members as a result of that. Um, the next thing on the agenda is YouTube. And uh, we are recording uh, tonight's meeting. And any of the NJFCC programs will be recording them as long as the speaker gives us permission to do that. And then all of our competitions will be recording. And also there's an opportunity if uh, any of the clubs have a speaker um, or a competition that's uh, unique, um, contact us uh, if you'd like to post uh, your recording of that uh, up on YouTube and we'll be happy to do that and uh, promote uh, whatever the clubs are doing. Ellen, this is Rick Kent. Um, Hi, Rick. I have a question about um, incentives for joining versus being on Meetup. And um, what we found is, you know, if you encourage people to, to join um, for a specific content, like, uh, you know, a good speaker who's going to give something that normally you would have to pay for, if you say, well, members of the NJFCC clubs are free, but um, if you are not a member of a club, you have to pay. That's a good way to incent people to join clubs as opposed, as opposed to just, you know, um, luring people in. So it's a good idea, I think, to create this, you know, come join us approach in terms of fees. Um, so far, we've been doing the programs uh, for everybody for free. But uh, your idea is something we'd like to consider. Good. Thank you. Well, so I'm, I'm going to add to that because I know a lot of clubs are on here as president and vice presidents and delegates. Basically, our meetup group was started to help the member clubs. We want you guys to make money from the NJFCC because somebody asked me a long time ago, what does the NJFCC help us? So think about it. If you have a speaker, pick a speaker, any speaker, and you cost you $150, $170, $300, $500, $1,000. You got an art wolf, okay? We want to help you offset your costs and promote your club because we feel that by promoting your club event, it's going to attract speakers to your club. In other words, if you join the NJFCC, yeah, no, you can't do that, you know, really. So we want people to join your club and your event. And that's why we highly recommend that people from the clubs advertise through the NJFCC meetup because then it'll be more specific. We don't care that you charge. We don't care that you make all the money. The NJFCC is not asking you for anything. We're going to just promote your event if you're a member of club. And that way, uh, Virginia, you guys have done a lot of events. Well, okay, three or four. We're going to go with three or four. Uh, <laughs> you know, of 
you know, promotion through the meetup group that the NJFCC has sponsored. And it's to benefit the club. It is, and we get we get a pretty good response on meetup. Uh, where we run into a glitch with it is if we're charging, like we are for a speaker this month, it, we get like 40 people saying they're gonna come on meetup and five people sign up on Eventbrite, so. Um, right, it, and that's it, where Eventbrite is the key. That's why, you know, Ellen was talking about, that's why we're telling you, you know, you gotta put your money where your mouth is, you know, you gotta go sign up through Eventbrite because right. everybody says, yeah, 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 I'm coming. And then they don't pay the $5. Right. They don't pay. Don't pay and, but, but it does give the club visibility. I will say that. So right. it's very helpful. So the, the problem I see in terms of, you know, um, luring people in by charging them a fee is that um, it doesn't quite really attract permanent members. It attracts flyby people who say, if you get a really headline speaker, they'll show up. And I think the point is, is really to, recur, you know, to uh, lure people in because they've got, um, it is in their interest. It is really in terms of they, they like the people that they're going to meet. They like the, you know, the cooperation of the club. They like the, um, uh, the idea of actually joining an organization that's going to be attached to for a, a little bit of while. That the problem with you know a speaker-oriented approach is that um, it's a one-time event, and they need to decide. You know, are they going to fork over the money, even though it's not a lot of money, especially given how expensive photography is, um, to to do that. And so. That's, you know, that's a, we're, we're experiencing exactly the same thing. So we have lots of meetup uh, people and we occasionally get, you know, one, two, three over the course of a couple of months to actually join because they like the event. It's not the, it's not the monetary issue um, that, that's the issue. It's, it's really, do they find it to be a forthcoming I like the people that I'm seeing, uh, you know, I'm encouraged by the process. It's not the individual speaker. So uh, I do think that, you know, by only having sort of flagship events, we miss the opportunity to lure people in with meetup. Yeah, so I'm gonna go one step further. And I, I'm a camera club brat for 35 years plus. I know, Roman. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what, I, what, I, what I'm going to say is sacrilegious to camera clubs. And I'm going to say it now. We're not approaching the iPhone crowd. I, I, know, I know that's not a camera club thing that we all have an issue with iPhoneography, I'm gonna call it, okay? The smartphone photography, uh, we have to embrace it. We have to embrace it. Somehow we have to figure out a way to, that, that's the new market. I mean, my iPhone costs more than my digital camera, DSLR, okay? You know, so we, we, we've got to say, how do we capture that audience? We have to break the mold. I started it, Ellen's continuing. We have to figure out a way that we can say, that's our target audience. How do we capture them? <clears throat> can I interject something? Sure. The, uh, as far as the iPhone crowd, Everyone I know who uses it posts whatever they want to post on Facebook or Instagram, and they're not interested in competition or camera club. They're taking snapshots or they're taking a, a trip thing and putting it into whatever they're going to do in their Instagram. And they're not, they're not interested in a camera club. The, the beauty, and back to Richard's point on the meetups, one of the things that always has been so important to everybody I know in our clubs is the personal interaction in clubs, going to the meeting, seeing people, 
becoming friends, going on trips, going, you know, doing things together. And it becomes a big social thing. And no matter what we do on Meetup, no matter what we do on Zoom, you're only, you know, you're not going to really get to know and interact a lot with the new people. And they're not going to be able to interact with you because it's a very cold thing uh, to to do that. So I, I, don't, I just don't want to be, you know, throw water on every, everything. But the, you know, we have to realize that this has been a big problem. The, the big factor for, I think, all of us has been the personal interactions that we've had yeah. in clubs. Yeah. And, we're, and, we're, and we're not able to get that through Zoom, except with the people we already know. Well, but there's a difference with Meetup. Meetup's intention before COVID, okay, so I'm giving, I'm throwing that out there, was that we are going to meet in person. We are going to, it, it, Phil, it's our, it's our field trip page, you know? It's like we're going to go, we have an educational department that is chomping at the bit to say, let's meet up. We were supposed to do Patterson Waterfalls. We were supposed to do other things in person. So that's where meetup is different than everything else we've ever tried. And that's why we started this from the president's meeting two years ago saying, hey, we did a meetup, we're getting new members. Again, it's an in-person thing that we want to do. But, you know, COVID threw a curveball to all of us. It had to go away, more like a monkey wrench to all of us. Um, I know I see uh, people on that have been part of the meetup group and, and it's been successful except for the last year year and a half the meetup group is intended to be in person it's not intended to be virtual and that's where i think meetup group has the potential to help all the camera clubs okay we're going to go with the whole c word covid jeez you know we're tired of this the meetup group is intended to be in person so could I ask a question? I'm, I'm just looking at our schedule and we are taking, you know, one of these big steps into the future, which we don't know exactly how it's going to operate, which is we're going to do hybrid meetings. Um, we have a whole bunch of our existing members who really do want to um, uh, Roman's, you know, comment about the, the social interaction and they really want to meet up with the, the people they know in the clubs, in our club. Um, but, you know, we're trying to figure out whether it's going to be 20 people or two people that show up for our next meeting, which is coming next week. So we're saying, we don't know. So we're going to say, we're going to do it both ways. So you have a choice. If you really want to get there and see somebody you haven't seen in a year, then um, we'll, you know, we'll accommodate you because we're going to meet. But so, for those people, Charlie, are you on? I yes, know, I'm, yeah, I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, I think every camera club, and oh, by the way, you're president of the Federation, Ellen, <laughs> very familiar with all this stuff. And you know what? New world. We're 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 all dealing with that. And Charlotte, I think you can say, is Cam Nats doing virtual and in person? That's what the clubs are struggling with right now. Do we do both? Mm -hmm. you know? We're doing we're doing a mix, but we're not doing them simultaneously. So some meetings are in person and some meetings are virtual. Right. But we're not doing them the same. We're, we're all wading through the landmines and the, you know, we, we, we have no idea how this is going to work. Roman, let me jump in here. Um, Cranford, Milburn, we're going to be doing the hybrid uh, with in-person and at the same time broadcasting it through Zoom. So there you go, Richard. You know, good for you. <laughs> good for you, Alan. 
Could I ask we're, how you're how you're we're, how are you? we're wading out into the minefield? We are right. with our mash background, we're wading out into the minefield. How, how well, are you getting venues? Because I was at the Parsippany Library where we meet, we're hub meets, and again, they're not letting us have any meetings, not letting anybody have any meetings. So um, Phil, you gotta go, you gotta go virtual for now. And, I know, but um, I'm saying we well, you know, no, love to no, hear no, how no, you're no, getting no, hybrid. No. How, how are you getting no, hybrid? Uh, the Cranford Community Center uh, is open, and uh, we've got our meetings okayed for September. We have as we have as well. So we've booked our meetings for the year. You know, in terms of the Morris Town uh, Town Hall, you know, Community Center, and so we we have done the same thing that Ellen has done. Now, we don't know in three weeks, you know, as this thing progresses with the variants, whether that's going to hold. But we went ahead and booked the meetings so we could do the hybrid stuff. Um, uh, we'll see, you know, we're all taking a gamble on this. Well, uh, but no, you're not taking a gamble because in my opinion, you're, you're going virtual at least in some part. So if they shut down your in-person meeting, you're oh no, we have a fallback plan. You know, Roman, you're right. You know, we have a fallback plan. Uh, yeah. We can go back to Zoom meetings, and um, it it will work because we haven't had a real big fall off in terms of people who want to communicate. We do have, you know, we did a survey about uh, a month ago for our members, and there are traditional members who have been with camera clubs for 15, 20 years. And they just want to see their friends, you yeah, know. And, and everybody wants to meet in person. Yeah. But again, <laughs> welcome to the new world. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, we're all going to say the same thing. We all want to. I want to go out and hug you. You know, I want to. I don't want to see you on Zoom. You know, I want to go out there and uh, see people and do everything. We got to do what we got to do. And the bottom line is, we've learned how to. Uh, Dab, which is very different from what camera clubs used to do. None of us, we all want in-person meetings. We all want to go in there and see each other and do the socialization. We're all tired of Zoom meetings. But you know what? If that's what it takes to keep us alive and growing, then that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah, I agree. We're we're going to have to you know, we're going to have to survive the crisis, and right. I think we will. I think that you know the numbers of people on tonight are an indication that we will. But right. it, you know, um, flexibility, as you suggest, is really key in terms of right. saying, okay, how do I not lose members who are with us, who would not be with us if we took certain paths, and but, so. Right. And, and that is leading right into the last section of our meeting. Sorry, Ellen, I took your... <laughs> That's, no, it was the perfect intro. Uh, what we wanted to do with the last section of the meeting was to go around and uh, have everybody who's representing a club uh, tell us what to uh, have what have been and what are their strategies for surviving and thriving as we deal with the uh, ongoing virus. Um, so your intro was perfect and- uh, It's a segue. <laughs> I'm just gonna go around through the club list and uh, if somebody is here from the club, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd let us know what your club uh, has been doing. And Charlotte, you're up first. Okay. Um, well, we, we had a picnic this summer. We decided not to have any Zoom meetings over the summer because the membership said they were pretty tired and sick of Zoom. So we, we didn't do that, but we had an in-person August picnic, which was extremely successful. We had about 35 people show up from the club 
and everybody had a great time. Uh, we had good weather. It was, it couldn't have been better. And people stayed till the wee hours because they were having such a good time talking with their friends. So I think that really helped a lot. And we've planned a full schedule for next year. Uh, we're meeting at the uh, Educational Environmental Center, which is now open, although you have to wear a mask inside. Um, but we have meetings scheduled. Some of them are in person. Some of them are Zoom. It's a mix. And before every meeting, I'm going to send out memos to tell everybody whether it's Zoom or whether it's in person. It starts next week. We have no idea how many people are going to come. We're hoping to have a good show but I have no idea. So we're just going to do the best we can. Um, we have not lost a lot of members. Our membership is up above 50, I think, right now, uh, which is pretty decent. There are some people who said they're not going to join because they don't want to come in person, but there's not many of those. So I think, you know, we're limping along, but I think we're definitely going to survive. So. Charlotte, what club are you? Oh, Camera, Camera Natural. Which one? Camera Natural. Camnet? Yeah, Camnet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll let you, you know, identify the club when you speak. So I don't oh, know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, next club uh, is Cranberry Digital Camera Club. I'll speak for, uh, for our club. Uh, we, um, in terms of membership, I, I was really, really pleased to see between 20 and 21, we lost two members and that was due to them moving. So we actually kept 100% of our members and, and grew by a few, which, which was nice. Um, we surveyed our members about going back uh, beginning this month to in-person meetings. And the vast majority of them said that they were still uncomfortable um, with and the, if the reason was the COVID and the new variant. Um, we had a number that were undecided, but all in all, there were not enough people who were interested in in-person meetings for it to justify the expense of the church. So we've decided to wait through the end of the year and continue on Zoom only. We are committed to whenever we do go back, we plan to do hybrid because we have actually over the course of the last year and a half, attracted some members and attracted back some members who um, physically would not be able to come to our meetings because they're too distant uh, or they you know, have to be at work early in the morning and they really want to continue to attend uh, via Zoom. So um, we've been doing okay. Uh, we had last October um, a very, very successful in-person field trip that will probably repeat this October. It was to a, a wholesale flower farm that does cutting flowers. So we had, um, boy, we had 35 people and uh, they all um, had a great time and it was easy to keep social distance. So it's been working out. We've also had um, a lot of feedback on our speakers this year and on our judges. We've been able to get a lot of really um, high quality judges and speakers reaching outside of our area. Um, some really interesting speakers. We had a, a woman from Boston who did frozen flowers and water. And we have someone um, this month from um, Charlotte, North Carolina, all things that we couldn't do in person. So we're planning on everything being a hybrid, whether the judge is in person or on the phone, whether the speaker is in person or, or on Zoom and whether our members are in person or on Zoom. We, we think it's been a, kind of a boom that it, it was a real awakening for us to be able to have this, this venue of Zoom. Thank you. Okay, um, Cranford Milburn, um, I'll quickly uh, do ours uh, because I mentioned it uh, some uh, as we've been talking and also uh, Nellie, who's our delegate is on um, and Al and Nick who are members <laughs> are on. Um, we've decided to try to do um, 
a hybrid with uh, having the meetings uh, for the most part in person and broadcast. We've got several um, speakers who we're just going to do uh, Zoom with uh, one uh, in Chicago, another in Boston. Um, so those are just going to be Zoom, but we're going to try to do this hybrid setup. The one thing that really threw a monkey wrench, uh, what, I guess it was last week into everything, um, we normally meet and do our programs in uh, Cranford and our competitions in Milburn. Well, when we contacted Milburn, we found out that uh, the Milburn Community Center uh, has not reopened yet, and they're not sure if they're going to reopen. Um, and if they reopen, they very well uh, may be only reopening to uh, thin out some of the uh, Milburn schools mm -hmm. and uh, hold uh, some classes there because some classrooms don't meet with the state regulations and whatever. So it threw us into uh, a little bit of a dilemma and uh, luckily Cranford has come through. So the, at least for, this fo for the fall, um, we'll be doing meetings at Cranford uh, with the hybrid and then a couple that'll just be uh, Zoom meetings. Um, we lost two members because of the virus. Uh, one gentleman, uh, he and his wife had opposing uh, hours. Uh, he was on a night shift, she was on a day shift and with the children home, uh, there was no way he could come to a meeting. Uh, and another member uh, just uh, dropped out. Uh, so we've been uh, pretty lucky with keeping our uh, same membership. And the one thing that utilizing Zoom has done, um, a couple of members who have moved down to Florida have remained members because they can participate through Zoom. Good. Um, next, anybody here from Essex? Okay. Um, Alan, are you still here from uh, Four Seasons? I'm still here. There you are. Yeah, so we have decided to continue doing the meetings via Zoom, even though our clubhouse is open and available, but not everyone is comfortable meeting in person uh, so that's that's what we've decided to do but we have started doing outings and we we have one uh, last month which was successful we'll have one next month uh, so we do have our facility available and when everyone is comfortable including myself we will meet in the clubhouse and our membership remains pretty much uh, stable great thank you um, next, uh, Phil uh, from Hub. Um, <clears throat> well, we've uh, lost our facility, which has been a big blow to us, particularly after we moved to the Parsippany Library, which we felt was a better location mm -hmm. than our old Morris, uh, excuse me, uh, Mountain Lakes Library, as anyone who has ever had to drive there in the winter has found out. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And it, uh, but unfortunately, they, they just tell us again, they refuse to open. So we have to stay with Zoom. Uh, our Zoom participation on presentations and uh, just weren't that well attended. We membership has dropped to about uh, 25 people and uh, it doesn't get better with, you know, we've a hard time getting in contact with other people to increase it. Although we just I did get a couple new ones uh, recently uh from our website um so we don't know what we're going to have this year but uh with that reduced participation in presentations 
we took a bold move and uh, talked to uh, Carla Francis, uh, I did, of, of uh, Livingston, who I saw had put together a very uh, nice program with some very professional and indeed expensive presenters. And I said, well, why don't we see about joining up so we could share these since we're all going to do them by Zoom anyway. And that's worked out. So I think that's been a, a, a bit of a life uh, raft for us. And that uh, with Carla's help and Livingston's help, we're going to do that. We're going to have our separate competitions, though, and they'll be by Zoom. So it's just the presentations that we'll do jointly. So hopefully the presenters will have a uh, larger group of people participating uh, than was the case when we were having presentations. Um, we haven't really done much uh, in terms of uh, outings and things like that. Uh, we really miss a lot not having the uh, uh, getting together at meetings. We used to have things what we call pre-meetings, which were people would do educational things. And it was good not only for everybody who wanted to learn, it was also good because we used our members for presenters. And, uh, and they, uh, you know, it was good to have people share. And I think it built camaraderie, but we're missing that now. And, uh, and it's, and it's a, a struggle. So I'm just hopeful that we can uh, pick up some members uh, out of this uh, joint thing that we're doing with uh, Livingston and uh, have some good competitions and get back to the library. We do have an exhibit that we just put in the library today. So we've got 25 images uh, hanging uh, downstairs in the Halsey Road Library. Uh, great, uh, great place to do it. And uh, that people see that and that typically brings some attention to the club as some people see these and, and uh, uh, ask about the club and, and join. So that's always a good thing. And I'm, I'm happy we had that participation. Um, so that's great. That's it. Terrific. Thank you. Um, I don't see anyone here from Meta Deconk. Mati Deconk. <laughs> I'm not even going to try that again. <laughs> um, John was here earlier from Monmouth. Anybody else from Monmouth here? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we lost the meeting place. We meet in the church, and uh, they have COVID restrictions and they need to use the meeting room. Uh, but in addition to that, and the membership decided to continue to do meetings via Zoom until at least the end of the year. And as we, uh, I guess, get into another month or so, we will start a search for another meeting location. If in fact, membership at that point is comfortable meeting in person or that we can justify doing the hybrid model. Great. Okay. Um, and I would just comment also that our membership is, is down from a peak of about, I don't know, I think 110, 115. Now we're about 70. And that's been happening over the last uh, three, four years. Uh, I don't think it's, we've had a huge impact due to COVID. But in general, the, the membership has dwindled. Wow. That's not good. No. Um, where, in, uh, where in the Monmouth area are you looking for a new meeting site? Anywhere. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we have a committee. I'm heading up a committee. And we have a whole list of, of possible locations. Okay. Um, and we just felt it was a little bit premature to start looking now because things are so fluid with the with the COVID and people's attitude that there was no point in searching for another location uh, unless we felt we were going to meet at least partially in person. Vicki, you want to say something? Yeah, Alan, I yes. suggest you start now, even if you don't plan on doing it until spring, because it's going to take you that long to find a place. Okay. Um, we were looking at Cranberry forever and couldn't find a place. And finally, one of our 
longtime members came up and said, my church will let you come. Okay. But if it weren't for that, we wouldn't have had a place to go to. Yeah, I know you, you moved locations. Well, now we're not even meeting there. Right. You heard Debbie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki. Um, Monroe isn't on tonight because they're meeting tonight. Um, uh, Mars Photo Club, Rick. So we are going to do, uh, we are going to trial um, hybrid meetings. Um, we are fortunate in that we have a location that is uh, declared itself open, which is the Morristown Town Hall. Um, and they have a senior center, which is where we meet. Um, we, we have no real good idea about how many are going to uh, participate in the upcoming meeting next Wednesday for our hybrid meeting. But David Unger and I are going to be there <laughs> and we invite anybody who wants to show up with masks, by the way, because the township or the town requires, you know, masks, which is one of those, you know, sort of things we have to live with. Um, but we will report back in terms of our success and or failure in terms of a hybrid meeting and we that's one of the things by the way um uh ellen that we can share is our experience in terms of running hybrid meetings i think that would be a really useful you know okay. kind of exchange what works Absolutely. what didn't you know there are a lot of internet you know kind of gurus out there that said oh yeah, yeah i can do this but you know, the real experience would be real helpful in terms of... Um, well, what I did was I asked our digital chair, um, Ryan Kirshner, and uh, uh, Nick, who I think is still on, uh, to figure out how to do this. Um, uh, Ryan is uh, extremely commute, uh, computer and... Uh, uh, technically oriented, and uh, Nick's been doing something similar um, with uh, the College of St. Elizabeth uh, with uh, his classes there. Good, but um, sharing amongst the group, you know, can, I think can help, you know, what works, what doesn't. Ha don't spend a lot of money on stuff that, you know, might work, but it, you know, until somebody says, oh, it's great, it would be really helpful. So uh, we met, we have, you know, cameras that are yeah. our cell phones. We have microphones that, you know, you need to set up so the audience can hear on both ends. There are some YouTube videos out there that help you set up that, but we'll we'll report back in terms of okay. our their success or failure. And uh, if we would we would be very interested in hearing that, and um, it, that would be very helpful because you know we 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 don't know we don't know what we don't know. We think exactly. we know what we need to do, uh, but. And we think we need, there's some equipment we're gonna to need to purchase. So it'd be nice to know what, what's the best equipment to purchase. Um, but, you know, logistically, it, 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 we can see it's gonna be a challenge. There's gonna to have to be someone sitting monitoring the Zoom uh, in addition to the people interacting in the room. But somebody's gotta keep, keep an eye on that Zoom for questions and issues and, um, you know, everything else. So it's gonna be, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but we are committed to doing it. So I would be very uh, interested for anyone who's out ahead of the curve to. Uh, I think uh, once we get, uh, once uh, the people who are uh, doing this get the bugs figured out, uh, we'd be happy to share our knowledge with everybody. Absolutely. Step by step. Okay. Um, next is. Uh, Ocean County. I don't think there's I don't see any... anybody here. No, I don't either. Ellen, um, I I'm here from Livingston. We'll get the. Oh, you'll be at the end. Last one. Oh, in. I, I just. <laughs> how did I skip you? I'm sorry. Because I was late coming in. <laughs> maybe. 
<laughs> no, because I just, for some unknown reason, uh, skipped over you on the list. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Go ahead, Carla. So if I may. <laughs> um, we have the same problem everybody else has. We already planned back in the spring that we would be going, at least with all our presenters on Zoom, because they are all well-known photographers from all over the country. And we, as Phil said, we're partnering together with um, pretty much all of them, except the first one, we're partnering with Cam Nats and Sparta. And this is nice for all of us to share the expenses. We hope that we're going to someday have our competitions in person, but we also have lost access to our place right now. They're not open at night. So um, we made sure everything could be done on Zoom. Um, our club has a lot of senior citizens in it. In fact, I'd say the bulk are senior citizens. And you do see less participation anyway, and some have dropped out. So I noticed that our average meeting, we had about 22 people listening in. I don't think we ever even hit 30 this year. Um, I don't know if it would make a difference in person because I think a lot of people are afraid to go out in public anyway. So, um, but we're hanging in there and um, I, we, I guess you know that we're gonna host with you through Eventbrite with Brian Peterson in October. And Natalie Gregorio is uh, working with you on that. Are you aware of that? No. <laughs> no. She, uh, she was taking care of it and uh, <laughs> okay. there would be a charge for the people to come that are non-members of okay. um, Hub or uh, Livingston, but he's costing us $250. Okay. Which I think um, it went through hunts, I think. Okay. But um, if all right. You're not you're not sure that you've con been in contact with me? um no Natalie hasn't contacted me, but we'll work it out. Okay, because she seemed to think there was still time, but uh is that the case? Because it's the first week or the second Monday in October. Um like a little over a month off, maybe like five weeks. It's October 11th, um, and we've, it's got a con day. we've got a conflict, uh, which we're going to have to talk about offline. We have a conflict? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to talk about it offline. All right. Um, well, no, then. she ha she hasn't contacted me, and, uh, but we'll work something out. Well, she should be on the call too then. Yeah, okay. No problem. We'll work everything out. Okay. So other than that, we're in the same boat everybody else is in and um, hybrid would not work anyway because we don't have a place to meet. So we'll see what happens as the year goes on. Okay. Um. Let's see. Where am I on the list now? Um, Raritan, uh, Daniel got off. Okay. Um, Ridgewood. Uh, nobody. Uh, River Laughlin, nobody. Uh, Somerset. What about River Point? Oh, River Point. I'm sorry. River Point. Um, well, we haven't grown or shrunk because we have a set amount of a set audience for our club. We are only allowed to recruit members from our community. Oh, just like Stonebridge and uh, mm -hmm. Four Seasons. And but we're out, we're able to get back into our clubhouse and we've had a couple of had at least two meetings now in the clubhouse 
but our competitions have been on Zoom because we're out of the way for most judges. So it's really worked out well for getting judges for Zoom. Okay. <laughs> Through Zoom. Um, but, you know, I don't think Nick would have traveled down. But anyway. <laughs> Where are you? Where is River Point located? We're in uh, Manchester, New Jersey, oh. right, by, right by Lakehurst Air, Air Force or <laughs> Naval Base. I know Lakehurst very well. Okay, well then you can come down, Ellen. <laughs> I wouldn't. I to me that's that's not a long trip. Well, you know, I mean, for somebody up further north, Cranford isn't that far either, but. You know, further north, it's harder. Yeah. Um, we, so I, like I said, we've had, our judging has mostly been by um, Zoom, which works out for our members who are snowbirds. So. That's good. It, it really, well, there's not that many, but there's, the photographers tend not to be here, but one family <laughs> at least is. And we have one of the things we do among communities is with Stonebridge and Four Seasons and a few others. I think Regency and a couple of others, the Titaconk. <laughs> um, we have an interclub, an intercommunity competition. And two years ago was the last one we had, and it was in person at one of the communities. I don't know, maybe it was at Stonebridge. I think it was, but um, it was. And this year we're going to be doing it online in through Zoom. Right. So that's that's affecting that. But other than that, I mean, we can meet in person because there's a very small amount of us. We've only got about 21 members in our club and it'll never grow much bigger. <laughs> we've tried, trust me. <laughs> if you can get, we I mean, we even had a cell phone presentation, <laughs> cell phone photography presentation so that people would join so they could take pictures with their cell phones, but didn't work. But no- What not. you're experiencing with low membership, Every, Every. Uh, you know, adult community club has the same issue. Yeah, we it's all have it. A very small percentage of people are uh, are sufficiently interested to participate. Yeah, in it's not that they're not good photographers. They just don't want to be bothered. Well, they be golfing or doing something else. So. I, know, just, I, I think there's just not the level of interest for most people. They're interested mm -hmm. in snapshots. Same problem we have with teenagers. <laughs> anyway, that's pretty much what we're doing. We're we're not going going to hybrid okay. because we don't have the equipment and we don't have the the you know facilities for that. All right, thank you. Um, next on the list, uh, anybody from? I don't see anybody from Rockland. No. Um, Somerset. Hi, this is Sudhir Mehta, I'm president of uh, Somerset County Photo Club. Yes. We meet in Manville uh, Public Library. We have about 30 to 35 members. It varies the membership. So this year, the library said they will open in September. So we plan for a hybrid setup. But now they're telling us that uh, Somerset County Libraries will close at 8 p.m., so it's going to be a problem. <clears throat> so we'll have to stay on Zoom right now, I guess. Uh, so I'd be interested in learning about uh, what the experience is with hybrid with other clubs, but uh, we will have to figure out uh, going further whether we find a new venue or try to change our timing, which will be difficult because the judges, you know, may not want to come that early. We have to start 
like 6.30 or something. So wow. that's going to be an issue. So we'll, we'll see tough. what happens, I guess. <clears throat> uh, so that's where we are. OK. Um, next, uh, Sparta, Virginia. Yes, um, we've actually done very well over the uh, over the pandemic. I think um, with our with our virtual meetings, we were we were able to attract people from you know New York State and other places that were quite far away. Uh, so our membership has stayed very stable during the pandemic. Some of our um, some of our but we are going to start meeting again in the fall. Uh, we're going to meet. Um, we used to meet two times a month. Now we're going to meet one time a month in person and one time a month vir virtually. And we are going to send our in-person meetings out over, over Zoom or WebEx is what we use. But we are going to do that. Uh, hopefully it'll work OK. Um, our connection at the, where we're at the ambulance building, Sparta Ambulance Building, where we meet is not as strong as we would like. So we're kind of crossing our fingers that it'll all work. <laughs> But um, I'm hoping it will. One of the reasons that we are meeting in person, not only because we can, but because some of our members up here don't have very good internet connections. So they were, they were not able to attend some of our meetings when we were virtual. So it was, it'll be nice to see everybody again. But over the, as far as membership goes over the last year, or, or one of the things that we found that really helped increase and hold our membership is that we have user groups and there's basic photography user groups, there's Lightroom user groups, there's Photoshop user groups, and these are for members only. And so if somebody's interested in, especially beginning photographers, we, we had about 12 beginning photographers sign up for the club when we first started offering the, uh, the basic photography user groups. And um, they, they stay with you, especially the ones that are very interested in photography, uh, if you help them get started. And then um, we uh, we've also we also do a lot of outings, and these are for members only. And so people people who want to get together with other photographers really like that. And by making it members only, they uh, they join the club, and they usually stay with us. So we've uh, we have about a hundred members currently. It goes up a little bit wow. in wow. a year, but um, but it's a good active club, and and uh, we've great. had a lot of a lot of luck on it. So, and I would be interested in, uh, in people's feedback on what's, how they do their hybrid meetings. Um, Cause I'm, like I said, I'm not hundred percent sure how well that's gonna work. So uh, whatever information I can get would be great. Okay. I think we're gonna, we're gonna tie everybody into once we figure out uh, how to do this uh, hybrid. That would be good. Okay, um, I don't see anybody here from Staten Island. Um, Stonebridge? Um, okay, don't. we are also a closed membership, just our own community. So we have about 30, uh, 30 members. Um, we've been, everything has been on Zoom and we kind of enjoy it actually. We have competitions, we have workshops, we have what we call show and tells. Uh, we haven't had too many outside speakers, even during Zoom. Um, the membership stays around 30. Our big problem is getting more members to participate. You know, you get a small in-group and we can't seem to push the others. They join, they pay their dues, but they don't become active. We, we had a couple of trips. We, we love trips, but because of COVID, we haven't actually done too many. Yeah. Um, everybody always enjoys it. But again, we don't get, you know, a, a, a large number going. Um, but we're active. You know, those who are active are definitely active. We run from little expert to sort of beginner. Uh, and we have two levels. We have an expert level and a what they call an intermediate level. And, it, and it's been working out. We just, we had a meeting this morning and we had a long discussion. How do we get people to participate? We didn't come up with a whole lot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's about, that's about it. We have no problem with that. 
with a venue because we have our own clubhouse. Uh, we were going to go to hybrid, but we decided we would just water everything down because most people don't want to sit in the clubhouse with their mask on for two hours. Mm -hmm. So we're staying on Zoom indefinitely right now. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, Tina, Kathy. Okay. Um, well, our meeting place is, as of now, they are open and um, we meet in a recreation center in um, town. And um, so we're just gonna see how it goes. Um, we plan to have all our digital competitions on Zoom, um, but our printmakers are determined that they won't actually use their prints at the club. So we plan on having our print competitions at the club. Uh, some of our speakers that are coming in programs, some of them are going to be on Zoom, some in the club. Um, so, and if the if the club uh, if the recreation center decides no, you know we're going to close, then we can just move everything to Zoom. Um, we did we have been taking uh, field trips during the summer and had our usual turnout of about fifteen people, you know, just local field trips. Um, we do have our general membership has gone down over the past few years where we used to average about 100 people um, a year. And I would I think we had like a little over 70 that joined, you know, in, in September. But I think a lot of them were thinking that we'd eventually be back in the club before the year was over because they never did go on Zoom. They never joined in on the Zoom meeting. Oh, wow. And uh, so I would say only maybe about 60 or 70 percent of the club actually they joined, but then they they only about that many actually watched the Zoom competitions and programs. So I think some people just couldn't be bothered getting a webcam. It was like a lot of different reasons. So um, but yeah, so so if you go over the past few years, our membership is down from about 100 to about 70, and we'll see what happens. Um, you know, this year. And everything is kind of up in, in the air. But speaking about cell phones, we've really been pushing, you know, members and new and new people that we even meet when we're on our field trips. That yes, you can use. I've used cell phone photos in competitions and got good scores for them. Could because you know you can really. And I've got a new phone now, an iPhone 11 Pro Max. And this summer, I'm feeling like this is my new camera. <laughs> and, and we have a lot of people now we're getting more and more people are putting their cell phone photos into competition and it, you know they're they're large enough the files are large enough and and they just take you know beautiful photos and uh, you know if you know what you're doing you know <laughs> oh, uh, i mean they're not just you know snapshots and um and they're really good with like macro stuff uh, um i don't know i was looking at some garden recently uh skylands and it's got beautiful flowers and bees and it, it, you know so like i said it's my new camera almost but so we're really encouraging people you have a cell phone short put your cell phone pictures into competition you know it's uh, oh. why not you know and bring your friends and and we really do kind of push that on field trips if we meet anybody you know but um yeah because i do think that's kind of the way now to get new members and you know and then maybe once they they come there and they see what they can do you know with a, a regular camera you know, maybe they'll they'll move on to a, a camera, but um, but you know, for now, like I said, and there's other people we're putting in cell phone photos into competition, and they're doing fine. So, I've seen um, some great uh, images that are taken with a cell phone. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you uh, know how to put the composition together and the lighting's uh -huh. good, uh, exactly. it's hard to tell. Yeah, it, it is. No, I mean, when some of us first started doing it, and then we told club members after that, oh yeah, I took up my cell phone. They're like, "What, really?" You know. But there was two of us that really kind of started trying it about two years ago, and this was, you know, it was like an older cell phone, and it's still, you know, you got to work. You work on Photoshop, just like you do a regular photo, and uh, or whatever your software you use, and yeah. 
Um, it sounds anyway. like a great way to encourage new members too. That's that's kind of our thinking too. So, um, so anyway, this year we're just gonna see how it goes. Do our okay. Hopefully, it will work out. All right. I don't see anybody on from Tri County. Uh, no one on from Valesburg. Uh, so, uh, Lisa from Vernon. Yes. Hello. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Very good. Um, our club in Vernon, New Jersey has gone through tremendous change. Um, we went from mostly seniors meeting in person at the Vernon camera at the Vernon Senior Center to a complete pivot to Zoom. Um, we've increased our membership from 21 to 40. Wow. And we've done it through um, professional speakers, meetups, and um, some competitions and assignments. That's great. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have anything to add? I, I have a couple of things I'd like to either just to mention. Um, you know, we, we was, we've all witnessed the benefits and the drawback to Zoom. One of the benefits is out of town speakers um, and several clubs, including uh, the two I belong to, have gotten out of town speakers. Is it possible to have uh, NJFCC to create a list of out-of-town speakers that clubs uh, would give a favorable uh, recommendation for so that other clubs can uh, perhaps make use of those speakers? Sure. On the reverse side, we've talked about using uh, the NJFCC judges more, but I've heard some folks say that they're, and I know, Monmouth has done it as well as Four Seasons used out of town judges. So you've got, in that case, a, uh, a conflict with trying to use yeah. uh, the NJFCC judges more. So I don't know what, if anything, should be done about that. And my third point we've got three people, including myself, that are representing clubs from adult communities. And we have several other clubs that are part, that are um, members from adult communities in NJFCC. But there are many other adult communities in, throughout New Jersey and ones are practically going up all the time. Uh, I live off of Route 33 and if I go east, there are two being developed. And if I go west, there's one being developed. So that's a potential source of new clubs even though they're all going to be small and have the same problem as uh, the other clubs have. So just mentioning that as a way for the NJFCC to grow. Okay, that's a great idea. That's, and that's my list. Thank you. Um, anybody else? I like that idea too. I, I think a, it's- a, a list of the, uh, uh, you know. People from out of state, out of town, who would do the camera clubs program? I think it's I think it's interesting that the two clubs that um, are talk about growing rather than shrinking are Vernon that I heard and Sparta, both of which are isolated relative to the rest of us, and I wonder if that's a factor, or alternatively whether one of our problems is that we have too many clubs so close together that we are splitting up, if you will, the interest. But what Virginia, I'd ask you and, and uh, Mayor, uh, who, who, you're, you're Sparta, who was- uh, Lisa. Vernon, Lisa. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you find that maybe that's because you guys are out there and you don't have a lot of uh, competition, so to speak? I yep. think that, uh, if, I, if I could, if I could speak, Lisa Burghardt here with Vernon. Um, I think that there's always competition for activities and things to do. 
Um, in our unique situation, I found that our members, both existing and new, um, are very interested in photography and want to learn and actually had some extra time perhaps where they could pursue it. And living up in a rural area, as Virginia will probably make note, we have some nice opportunities to get together outside and photograph, which I think in a more um, suburban environment might not be the case. I think I would, I would agree with Lisa. I think the other thing is um, we don't have a lot of competition up here. A lot of the members of, of Vernon are also members of Sparta. Um, and there aren't a lot of other clubs up here. So that certainly can help. Plus our population up here is growing. So there's more opportunity to, to, to get new members. But I, I also think Sparta had 80 members three years ago. And because of our user group programs, we have significantly increased the members. So I would also suggest that maybe it, it's the programs that you're offering that can really help. help. Uh, plus our outings, people love to get together to shoot together. And that, and that really helps. Now, the downside of that is it requires somebody in the club to organize it, which isn't always so easy to find. So, um, but, I, but I really think that, that the programs that you offer uh, can really help the, your membership increase. Virginia, how do, you, how do you get people to know about your user groups? We have, we have four user groups at Hub for years. And, uh, you know, but you still need people. I think we, in a way, we did too good a job. In other words, everybody who had to learn about lighting and Photoshop and, you know, other software and, and uh, whatever other groups, camera equipment, well, they all learned, you know, so we need to reach new people to do that, you know, so we, we do, we do a lot of local advertising, we're pretty visible locally and we do, a, so does Vernon, they do a lot of local advertising about the club and, and what it's doing in our local advertising rags and and Vernon actually puts ads on the radio up here, which is pretty cool. And um, so we do a lot of local advertising. Plus we, Sparta has a huge, huge print competition in the fall, which is open to the public. They can also submit. So that creates a lot of visibility for the club. And, and I, I think, plus we attend, we go to uh, local uh, farmer's markets and stuff. We will set up a booth at a local farmer's market primarily, we occasionally, and. Occasionally we sell things <clears throat> there, but most of the time it's just to get visibility for the club. And we have, the, of course, the Sussex County State Fair, which all the three clubs up here participate in. And that there's a big opportunity there to create visibility for the club. So we have a lot of ways, to, we have developed a lot of ways to create visibility for, both, for all the clubs up here. Okay. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> Question, what exactly is the user group? It's, it's just what we call, it's a, it's a group of people with a specific interest who get together on a regular basis. And it, it can be like, I mean, we do, we keep, we're keeping those virtual because they're easier to, to, to do virtually, but it, it can, like our Photoshop user groups, there's probably about 12 people that come regularly to that, but they're very interested in Photoshop. Some of them are very expert, others aren't so expert, but they share the different things that they, they can do with Photoshop and answer questions and things like that. So it, and once in a while, we'll get speakers for the user groups too. Uh, we had uh, uh, it was Joe Joe Brady from uh, he 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 attended one of our Lightroom Photoshop user groups once to uh, to provide some expertise and so so it's similar to what we call workshops. Yeah, you know, it, could, it could be except that these are ongoing. They aren't just a one time. There there we'll have four or five Photoshop user groups a year, four or five Lightroom user groups that could. Thank you. Uh, one more thing, Virginia, I don't know if you got any new members from it, but um, you have a, a, a public Facebook group that um, yeah, that's true. non members and it's a very active one and the, the my other two clubs have Facebook pages, but they're not very active. And I know I share all my pictures on the Sparta Facebook page, because they welcome anything. Yeah, we do have a lot of non-members signed up for that, and they often become members after they, you know. Right, because you also are able then to use that as advertising and promotion right. for non-members who are part of the Facebook group. And when you 
put up enticing things and you say, okay, this there's an outing for members only, or here's a special program for menus only. So all those other people who have been, you know, passive as far as the club, but on their uh, Facebook page, uh, then they see this advertising because they're accustomed to looking at other things, mostly my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Which are beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, Sudhir Mehta from uh, Somerset Club. I, I have a question as far as the Facebook. Uh, is there a way to convert your, uh, we have a Facebook page which is private. So is there a way to convert it to public? Or yeah, not? I think you can if you go into the instructions somewhere. There's, there's probably a way yeah. to convert it. Yeah. You have to look in the security. There's a way to convert it. We did that. We were private, but then we made it public. In fact, it was started by Clark, Virginia. Really? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Wow. <laughs> that's great. And Clark is still a member up here, by the way. And he's a member for us, too. We get <laughs> <laughs> He's a good guy. He comes and judges or presents, and then yep. instead of a fee, he doesn't want to accept it, so we give him membership. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Okay, this was supposed to be an hour and a half meeting. We've run to uh, two hours. Um, I think uh, though running over the extra half hour, we've exchanged a lot of really great information. Um, and hopefully we'll get to uh, share some more information uh, once we get uh, our hybrid uh, meetings up and running. Um, and I wanna thank everybody for uh, uh, being on the Zoom tonight. And uh, just a final, are there any more comments? Uh, I just have a question, please. Sure. Uh, I don't know who, was, uh, who I was talking to. I left my email on the chat. I've got it. Oh, okay, thank you. I've got it, and when I download the recording, I'll also get a copy of the uh, chats. Okay, and I assume we'll get minutes of this meeting because I tried to take, keep notes, but I didn't do a very good job. Um, okay. Uh, I have I have I took he a usually send. He took some. Charlotte, did, thank you I so did. much. I <laughs> I thought right. I normally do that. I remember getting other NJFCC minutes. Okay. Um, well, Charlotte said that she took minutes. Thank You're you. also going to be able to listen to the recording on Zoom. I'll be sending out the link to that to everybody. Okay. Um, and then specifically, like, I didn't jot down the date for your, um, your big show. Uh, okay. About your competitions i didn't keep track of all that so all right we'll get that information to you, you. Mm -hmm. all right lastly congratulations al yes congratulations yes. al absolutely here here he's hiding thanks <laughs> good night i have to leave no i'm still here thank you thank you everyone again um very, very much uh, appreciated, very humbled by this. And um, uh, thank you uh, once again, everybody. Have a uh, good night and be safe, everyone. Okay. And I'll say there couldn't be a more deserving person of the citation than Al. And on that note, uh, I'll say good night to everybody. Good night. And, uh, good night, everybody. Good and night. stay safe in the storm. <laughs> thank you, Ellen. Good thank night. you, Ellen. Thank you. Congratulations and good night.